If you will, repeat after me. To God, be the glory. To God, be the glory. To God, be the glory. For the great thing that he has done. Amen. Swiftly give honor to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, to his Son, our elder brother, Lord, and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and to the blessed Holy Spirit. Truly, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. He didn't have to do it. Oh, but I'm so glad that he did. As my pastor said, allow our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. There's a word from the Lord today. It's found in Exodus, the 31st chapter, verses 1 through 11, Exodus. 31st chapter What a week this has been The Lord has got us through And we are thankful Thankful for the Boston Police that captured one and tried to capture a, the other but just wouldn't happen. But we're thankful that those that decide that they can take matters into their own hands are off the streets this morning. We had a prayer visual here this past Thursday for them and officers and our government, our international community. We thank God for those that were able to make it out on this past Thursday. Word from the Lord is in Exodus, the 31st chapter, beginning at verse 1. When you get it, say, I got it. And we find these words recorded. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Belzerel, the son of Ur, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship, to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass, and in cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of timber, to work in all manner of workmanship. And I have, and I have, behold, I have given unto him Elohim, the son of Ashamak, of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all that are wise hearted, I have put wisdom, and they may make all that I have commanded thee. The tabernacle of the congregation, and the ark of the testament, and the mercy seat that is there alone, and all the furniture of the tabernacle, and the table, and his furniture, and the pure candlestick with his furniture, with all his furniture, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his furniture, and the ladder, and his foot, and the clothes, the cloths of service, and the holy garments, for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons, to minister in the priest's office, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded thee, there shall they do. 
Let me read that last little bit right there. According to all that I have commanded thee, shall they do. Let me, let, let, let me, one more time, just according to all that I have commanded thee, shall they do. Y'all with me? The Lord had a blessing to the hearer, to the reader, but above all, to the doers of his written word. I want to preach from the standpoint for just a few moments in your hearing. A sermon entitled, Do You Understand How This Works? Do you understand how this works? Do you understand how this thing works? Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, it's preaching time. And as always, Lord, I need you. Can't do it without you. So glad I don't have to. Open our eyes that we may see Jesus. Trying to work in our life. Open our ears that we may hear a word from you. And then, oh Lord, open up our hearts that your word may be safely lodged in the repository thereof. And no matter where we are, your word will rise up and help us to meet every occasion. This is our humble prayer. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. And in God's children, we said, Amen. Amen. May be seated in the presence of an Almighty God. Do you understand how this thing works? My brothers and sisters, the way this thing works is Moses goes up on the top of the mountain. Moses gets a word from the Lord. Ain't nobody else up there but God and Moses. Y'all with me so far? I want you to understand how this thing works. Once Moses comes down, God gives him instructions of how it's supposed to go. He tells the people, and the people go out and do the work. Uh, are y'all with me now? So, Reverend Smith, if the work ain't getting done, as long as Moses comes off the mountaintop, gives the people the instruction. If the work don't get done, whose fault is it? Say that again. Wait a minute, I ain't get no big. When the vision comes from the word, from the Lord, 
One of the ways that you know it's coming from the Lord is you can expect some opposition. And not only are you going to have some opposition, that's number one, but under number one, before you run off too quick, you got to realize that it's got to get rough before it gets better. Once he told them, Pharaoh's idea was to just simply go ahead and say, well, look, you were making bricks with straw. Evidently, y'all too iron. So y'all just go on and make bricks without straw. Yeah. It got harder before it got better. Right. You see, oftentimes, my brothers and sisters, when a vision comes and it gets hard, people want to go ahead and sit back. I ain't getting no big amen. Often time when the vision comes, folks want to look around and see what everybody else is doing. Folks want to look around and see what everybody else is not doing. But when a vision comes from the Lord, you ought to expect opposition and you ought to expect for it to get harder before it gets better. But secondly, not only of the opposition, one thing that you got to understand is, secondly, you get ready for the transition. The sign is that there's opposition. That lets you know you're in the right path. See, everybody wants folk to act right and do right and everybody do right and everything to go well. And that, no, 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 no. You ought to expect some opposition. You ought to expect it from within and from without. Pharaoh gave opposition. And the leaders, y'all ain't going to say that, gave opposition. But that's a good sign that you're on your way to your transition. Because once God loved to show himself strong, and once God shut up all the naysayers and Pharaoh's house, See, God, he like to show himself strong. Yeah. So Pharaoh, in other words, take your best shot. If you, if you God, Pharaoh thought he was a God. So God allowed him to see if he was a God. He, he said, I'm going to turn the water to blood. You go ahead and turn it back. Pharaoh couldn't turn it back. He said, I'm going to send flies in. And, 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 and if you are God, get rid of the flock. Hello, somebody. I'm going to send frogs in. And if you God, get rid of the frogs. sunshine in the darkness and allow my people to still be walking in the light. And you go ahead and turn the light switch back on. And after all that he did, it was preparing them for their transition. You got to be willing to go through it to get to it. Amen. See, sometimes God does things so that it won't look too easy for you. So that it'll look like that if it hadn't been for the Lord on my side. Where would I be? Sometimes the Lord does things to make it look like if sometimes, let me just put it like this, Gideon, come in here, what, what, what happened? Well, I, I had over 30,000. Yeah. And the Lord said, you, you got too many. Yeah. See, sometimes you got to weed out the crap. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just a bunch of folks sometimes that's just there for the crap. <laughs> and he got rid of them. He came out and he said, anybody that's fearful, you can just go on home. <laughs> 22,000 folk left. He got down and he said, you still got too many. Because sometimes what folks will feel like is that you're doing it yourself instead of realizing that God is the one that's got to be able to see you through. And I got a witness in here. So he told them to go down and to drink some water. And the ones that put their face in the water told them to go but the one that had a spear in one hand and lap water in the other hand, he said, that's the one that you take with you. When they had 10,000, when they went to the water, when they left them out of the water, they didn't have but 300. And that's how the Lord got the glory. 
not by a whole lot, but by a few folk that's willing to do it God's way. Have I got a witness in here? So you got to realize that you're going to have some opposition. You got to realize that it's going to get worse before it gets better. You got to realize that that's just a good sign that you're ready to go through your transition. But what you got to do is the third and the last thing. You got to stay focused on the mission. You can't fall out because of who might not fall in. You can't fall out because of who might not show up. If the Lord is touching your heart, you got to do what the Lord said to do. When Moses was up on the mountain and he came down, the Lord gave him the people that was going to go with it. He gave him the people that were going to see it through. Everybody in the number is not going to see it through because you got the visionary and you got the implementers. The visionary gets the vision. The implementer they go on and make it happen. God is looking for those that will make stuff happen. God is looking for folks that won't come up with excuses, but will come up with results. Whatever he puts in your heart, if you let God go ahead and do it, he will, I know he will, see you all through. Am I right about it? Say yes. That's why I made up my mind that you got to understand how this thing works. It doesn't matter if you can't see it. Go on and follow the marching orders. And the Lord, he will take care of you. Am I right about it? Now that you understand how this thing works, no matter what you see, you got to make up your mind that you know
Stay focused on the mission and do what you need to do for the Lord. Am I right about it? And when you do what you're supposed to do for the Lord, no matter what anybody else does, you're not looking for anybody to go through any unnecessary heartache or hardship. As you know, I always tell you, pray. I pray people up. Ain't praying nobody down. I'm looking for folks to go up. And you say, why do you do that? Because somebody took the time to pray for me. And some of you can bear witness, I was a plum fool. Amen, somebody. You didn't have to say amen too loud, amen. But if he can deliver me, there's hope for a whole lot of other folks. And we thank God. And you can, many of you can say the same thing. You may not have my testimony, and I may not have yours, but he brought us all from a mighty long way. Am I right about it? So we need to make sure that we realize how this thing works. God sends the visionary. The visionary comes back. The implementers know it's in your heart how and what to do. You just got to stay focused on the mission and do what you need to do. Because it's all for him. It was for him. It is for him. And it shall be for him. We want to see souls saved and lives change. Amen? Amen? Let us stand to our feet. There could be someone here today that does not know Jesus Christ as a free party of your sins. If that's you, the doors of the church are open. Now is the time. If you don't know Jesus, it's high time to get to know Jesus. Because you never know how this thing is going to work out. We saw earlier this week people just running a marathon in the epitome of good health. The next thing you know, people are gone, dead, almost 200 people injured. You never know where death is. You never know where near death is. And so I behoove you to come to the Lord. We saw on the news this week People in their home getting ready for supper down in West Texas. You don't have to be out in the street. You can be in a home. People in the nursing home, gone. People at work, gone. Missing. Can't even find remains. If you're not ready, it's going to happen, y'all, in the twinkle of an eye. You may not have time to say, Lord, I accept you. And you may not have time to say, Lord. So now that you have the opportunity, now is the time to come to the Lord. And then, could be someone, you know you're saved, Lord, I've touched your heart. You've accepted, but you're looking for a church home. Now is the time to come and join. You come by letter. You come by Christian experience. You come as a candidate for baptism. However you come, now is the time. You don't need to put it off. You need to be working in somebody's church. And if the Lord has led you here, and he's tugging on your heart and saying, now is the time, then now is the time to come. Come by letter. Come by Christian experience. Come as a candidate for baptism. If you need somebody to walk with you, just grab somebody by the hand. Squeeze the hand and they'll walk with you. They'll walk with you. Is there one? Is there one? Let us bow our heads. Most kind and all wise Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the multitude of blessings that you bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to revisit how this thing works for some and for learning the first time how this thing works for others. For Lord, you send your man servant, your woman servant, to get a word from you. Come down and Lord, give the word to the people. And the people 
Go forth and do what needs to be done as you have given utterance. So help us, Lord, to be about the Father's business. Touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our souls, that we may recognize your voice working through the voice of the undershirt. We thank you, Lord, because you showed us in your word today that there are already folks that are within the body that knows what needs to be done and how to do it. So, Father, touch them. Work with them. Keep them encouraged. Because we realize we have implementers. We realize that we'll have workers that will get involved and do what needs to be done. So whatever capacity you would have us to serve in, let us recognize there'll be opposition. It'll get harder before it gets better. But Lord, we will make it through the transition. And we will stay focused on the mission. We thank you, Lord. And we appreciate it. Now, Lord, bless each one under the sound of my voice. Some have come today for one thing and some have come for another. But Lord, bless us in the multitude of the things that we stand in need of. We thank you and we appreciate you. We know you didn't have to do it for us. But we're so glad that you've been blessing us in the past. That you're blessing us right now. And that you have the thoughts for us to prosper us and to bring us to an expected end. Not the